happy March. So as many of you know, Beautiful and Dauntless magazine for March has been released and this is our um, video for the copy for the girl side of the magazine. I wrote on Girl Empower and um, the magazine's theme for the month is Empower. So instead of girl power, like it was a very popular term when I was in like elementary, maybe middle school, I have titled it Girl Empower because it's a little bit different than girl power like we knew back then. So um, to start off, let me read the verses that we are looking at today. And this is, we're still looking at a Proverbs 31. So today is Proverbs 31, 17 through 20. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds a distaff and grasps her spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. So once again, that was Proverbs 31 verses 17 through 20. So to be a woman that empowers, we ourselves have to empower first. Um, if you remember back to the first P31 session that I did in January titled Boss Babes, we discussed the importance of working eagerly, taking care of ourselves and our family, and working towards that which we were created for. So being a boss babe is all of those things and more. It also empowers you to empower those around you. Um, okay, so what I want to do is for us to pick up where we left off from um, January's session on Boss Babes, and that's verse 17, which is where we started today. So in that section, um, verse 17 starts off saying, She sets about her work vigorously, and her arms are strong for her task. So as this Boss Babe, this Proverbs 31 woman, is working away honing her skill, her skill is being strengthened, which is something that we talked about in the Boss Babe video. Um, she's also becoming stronger in mind and body. And why is that? She sees that her trading is profitable. So she sees that she's making money, um, she's putting in the work and it's bringing in money to take care of herself and her family, and um, this income is providing for them, and that empowers her. So this empowers her to continue in her skill, continue in her trade, um, knowing that she's getting empowered and being empowering through the thing that she is doing, the things that she's making. So not only is her work providing, but it's also in demand. That shows us that, you know, she, the products that she's making are very popular. People want them. Um, they continue to come and buy them. Uh, and all the other people know what it is that she's making. Um, so knowing that people want what you make is a very empowering thing. For us women that are in the business world or our boss babes trying to hustle getting things done, like knowing that people want what you are giving is very empowering. Um, it's also very crucial when you're running a business, as many of you may know. So when the verse says, the next section, it says, her lamp does not go out at night. And it's saying that she's empowered by the success of her hands and is spurred on to continue. So that is something that we need to remember when we're maybe just starting things out. Um, to continue, continue doing, continue building, and continue going towards success in your business, whatever that may look like, success in whatever you're pursuing. So being able to do something that you love with your life and seeing it become successful is a very empowering feeling, but it takes time to get to that place. Um, that's where the um, persistence comes in as a boss babe and as an empower. We need to be persistent in what we're doing and keep going for it. So, you know, most people don't just fall into that overnight or right away. That kind of stuff doesn't really exist. Um, if you're working towards getting to that place, I encourage you not to give up, but keep your lamp burning at night. I'm in the same place you are. You know, I'm, I'm working all the time trying to make this magazine happen and all of these different things and putting it out there and getting known and that kind of thing. And it's a lot of work. Um, so just keep it going. Keep your lamp burning at night. If you're already at that place, experiencing that success to some level, maybe you're not at the level that you want to be, 
um, but you've already experienced some, you know, take time to empower those that are still working towards it, take time to empower the other ladies and the other people that are around you to keep going after what they're doing. So the next section is verse 19, and it talks about the Proverbs 31 woman using the spindle and the distaff in her work. Um, so we can kind of tell that, you know, she's making garments. We already kind of know that. So she's making garments. That's her trade. That's her skill. Um, and the spindle, you know, those are the, the type of machines that they used to use back then. So that was her tool of trade. And we also know that she had female servants that worked for her as well. Um, so most people, when they've reached the high point of success in their field, they hire other people to do the work and then they just kind of oversee, they sit back and supervise. And um, so she had hired some females to work with her in making these garments, but she wasn't just sitting back and supervising. The P31 woman is not like that. She finds joy in her skill, um, so she continues to do it even after she's made it so far. But she's also an empowering example to her paid servants. So she shows them that she is no better than the AR. Instead of sitting back and watching them, she sits right down next to them. She's doing the work. She's, she's plowing through it. She's still making those garments. She's having fun and she's empowering her workers. So I want you to just think, like, imagine how empowered you would feel if your boss would come and sit next to you and do the work with you instead of, you know, like leaning over your shoulder and like, oh, you're not doing that right or, you know, whatever kind of thing they do. You know, instead of playing on their phone or on Facebook, imagine them actually doing the work with you, like how empowering that would be for you as an employee. So we see that she empowers those who work for her because she herself is empowered. Um, and she takes it one step further, which is really cool. So when she's finished making her garments, she doesn't just go and sell them all and you know she's not just focused on the greed or on the profit all that kind of thing she takes her garments into the marketplace which is where it says that she sells him and in those days and even still in several countries the marketplace is on the streets you know it's out where people are at mingling with them um and she sells her merchandise there on the streets so if we look back in verse 20 it says um, that she opens her arms to the poor and the needy. The poor and the needy hung out at her workplace. They hung out on the streets. If you go to pretty much anywhere, you'll see people that are homeless, you know, that are poor, that are needy. They're hanging out on the streets. And this is where this lady's marketplace was, where she worked. And those people could most likely not afford the goods that she made. They most likely couldn't afford the clothing, the garments. But she did not shun them. She didn't act like she was better than them. Instead, she empowered them by treating them as human beings. She opened her arms to them. Now that could just mean that maybe she gave them a hug. But knowing what kind of lady this was, reading other, the, the other verses here, you know, that probably means that she fed them. And she maybe even provided them one of the scarlet coats that she would sell to keep them warm. You know, all of these different things are opening up her arms to the needy and it's empowering these people that are humans, that, you know, they've came into a struggle with life, they're poor and they're needy, but she was still empowering them. You know, any, of, any and all of those things would be empowering to someone in need, someone that just needs, you know, a little hand out or a little arm to, to hold and help lift them up to empower them. So what can we, as modern day Proverbs 31 women, take away from this? What can we do to be empowering and to find empowerment? So first we can find empowerment in the work that we set out to do. Um, I want you to really take hold of that. You know, find something that you enjoy doing and become empowered by it. And then you can empower those that work with you and also those that are trying to make it in the world on, in, with their own skills, you know, like many of us are doing, empower them around you, encourage them to keep going, do what you can to help them out. And then we can also empower those that roam the streets, that are looking for food or looking for help. Just be human, treat them as human like they are. Remember that you're not better than anyone else because of a paycheck. Everyone has a different life and everyone needs empowerment in some form or another. So ladies, this is not the world is not a competition 
to outdo one another. We're all trying to make it, we're all trying to provide, we're all trying to live and succeed and strive in this life. And we can only do it if we empower one another. We can't step on each other, we need to help lift each other up. And if you're experiencing success, help lift each other up. If you're not there yet, keep pushing, ladies. And if you need empowerment, hey, I'm here for you in whatever way that I can. You know, I'm, I'm still going at it, but I want to be able to empower those around me to help bring them up as well. We can make a difference in this world. We can make a difference in our own little world. We can make a difference in the world that's outside around us, in the community. You know, who knows how far it could go. So. Be empowering, girl empower, okay? Bye.